So now we will see how we will interface external memory with the microcontroller. Now suppose this is our microcontroller. This is microcontroller. Now in this microcontroller we are having this signal AD0. This is AD1, AD2, AD3. AD4, AD5, AD6 and AD7. So these are multiplexed address data lines and these are available over port 0, pin number 0, port 0, pin number 1, port 0, pin number 2, port 0, pin number 3, port 0, pin number 4, port 0 0.5, P0.6 and P0.7. So, these are multiplexed address data lines and addresses are 8 lower 8 bits and higher 8 bits of the addresses that is from A8, A9, A10, A11, A12, A13, A14 and A15. These are 8 higher bits of addresses and these are available over these are available over pin number port number 2 port 2 pin number 0 port 2 pin number 1 port 2 pin number 2 port 2 pin number 3 p2.4 p2.5 p2.6 and p2.7 these. Now since we have to interface external memory, that's why, that's why due to this EA bar is connected to ground and we are using now ALE signal this signal we will use now and apart from this we will use now another signal here PSEN bar and Two more signals will be used, read bar and write bar. Read bar is at pin number port 3, pin number 7 and write bar at port 3, pin number 6. So these are the signals which are required for interfacing. Now, <coughs> Now to demultiplex the address data lines, we will use uh, one IC, the number of that IC is 74LS373. So this IC will be used for the demultiplexing of address data lines and basically this IC contains 8 
डी फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स एट डी फ्लिप फ्लॉप्स आर देयर इन दिस आईसी we know the operation of d flip flop as uh, suppose if this is one d flip flop uh, this is a d input and this is the clock and suppose this is q output q bar output so in this uh, d flip flop uh, this is a label triggered flip flop means if at the clock if we apply this type of symbol like this this symbol so this is clock so this indicate the clock is uh, this uh, flip flop is negative as triggered means this is the signal over the clock suppose we apply this pulse then with this symbol this indicate नेगेटिव एच ट्रिगर मीन्स वेन द क्लॉक इज गोइंग फ्रॉम हाई टू लाई हाई हाई टू लो एट दिस पर्टिकुलर टाइम वॉट एवर इज द वैल्यू ऑफ डी इफ वैल्यू ऑफ डी इज जीरो देन एट द आउटपुट क्यू वी विल गेट जीरो इफ द वैल्यू ऑफ डी इज वन देन एट द आउटपुट वी विल गेट वन but once this negative edge will pass after that if we change the value of d then there will be no change at the output for example uh, if let us assume uh, suppose d input is 1 and we have applied this clock so at the this edge the d input is 1 so output will become 1 now when this edge will pass After that, if we change the input d, if suppose we make the input d zero, and clock is, and there is no clock, we have not applied any clock. Clock is zero. So this d input, the value of this d will not transfer at the output. The value of d will be transferred at the output only when the clock is going from high to low. And if we remove this this bubble, now the symbol is this. previously the symbol was this there was one bubble now we have removed the bubble so in this case this flip flop is now positive as triggered this means suppose this is the clock so when clock is going from 0 to 1 at this particular time when clock is going from 0 to 1 at this time whatever is the value of d that will be transferred to the output and after this whether clock is going high to low or clock is low or clock is high whatever is the value of d that will not be transferred to the output but here we are having a clock and this particular where we here we are not having either this symbol or this bubble symbol nothing is there so this is label triggered flip flop so label triggered flip flop means when i got the value of clock this clock is high during that period whatever value of d that value will be will go to the output for example suppose we have applied this clock and during this period of the clock the value of d is 1 So this is the value of d during this period of the clock. So value of this d is one. So output will become one. But after this much duration, suppose we change the value of d from one to zero. Now value of d is zero during this time. So now from one we have changed the value of d, and clock is still high. So now output will again change from one to it will change from one to zero. And now since clock is still high and again we change the value from 0 to 1 the value of d is from 0 to 1 we have changed so here again the value of d will be now 1 so this one will again transfer to the output this means during the whole high duration of the clock whatever value is there in the d that will be transferred to the output so we are having some this type of d uh, Flip flops 
in this IC seven four LS three seven three, and in this there are eight D flip flops. So internal diagram of this uh, IC is like this. So this is connect. This is connected to. This is D input, and here this is clock, and here output Q bar is taken. Output Q bar is taken. This is flip flop number, flip flop number seven, which we which is connected to AD seven. Now AD six. For this also, we have connected to another flip flop. D input clock. This is clock and Q bar. We have taken the Q bar. Like this, in total there are seven, eight flip flops. Right? This is flip flop, flip flop number seven. This is flip flop number six. Like this, there is flip flop number zero. So I will draw this flip flop also. This is D input. This is clock, and output is taken from the bar. So what internally is done? All the clock inputs are internally joined together. All are joined together, and it is available here. And with the with the designation as we can write it as clock. So if we apply clock signal here, so same clock signal is applied to this flip flop, to this flip flop, to all the flip flop, the same clock signals will be applied. And and in the D flip flop, we we just now we discussed this is D input, this is clock, and here uh, whatever is the value of this is Q suppose and this is Q bar. So whatever is the value of D. Same value we will get at Q, and at Q bar, Q bar we get opposite value. Suppose at the D we have zero, so at Q we will get zero, at Q bar we will get one. So here we are getting the output from Q bar, and if we want the same value, whatever was the value of D, if that value we require, so here, for example, if D input is zero, and we are taking output from Q bar. So, if you want to get the original D value, then what we have to do? Simply, you connect here one NOT gate, invert it. So here you invert it, and you will get zero. So same thing is done here. Here also there is one inverter, but that inverter is a tri-state inverter, right? Suppose this is one inverter. So in this inverter, simply whatever input you will get. The complement of that you will get at the output. But in case of tri-state inverter, there is a third input. This is the third input of the tri-state inverter. Right? So this input is called as enable. And here, since we have placed one bubble, this indicates that if enable is equal to zero, then If enable is equal to zero, then uh, suppose input is x and output is y, then output is complement of input. This means inverter will operate if you make this enable input zero. To operate this tri-state device, we have to enable this inverter. And to enable this inverter, you have to apply zero value at enable. Once you apply zero value, then this inverter will operate as an inverter. And if you will make enable one, if you will make enable one, then then this inverter the output will be in high impedance state. Means uh, the output this section, whatever we have connected at this side, 
that will be totally disconnected from input side. So there is there is an open circuit. Just like there is, it is like this open circuit. Whatever electronic circuit is here, whatever electronic circuit is here, if enable is one, then both of them are totally disconnected. There is an open circuit, right? High impedance state. So this type of inverter is used here. So this is the inverter with one enable input. There is another inverter with enable input. Like this, there is eighth inverter with enable input. And what internally is done, all the enable inputs are joined together and is available here as a one input called as enable. Right? So there are eight D flip flops, there are eight these active load tri state inverter. So from this tri-state inverter, you will get at the address bit number 7. Because here we have connected AD7. Here we will get A6. Like this, we will get A5, A4, A3, A2, A1. And from here you will get A0. These are our 8 lower order address when we get at the output of this IC. So this IC is uh, 74NS373. This is the IC number. So all this AD5 is also connected to one flip flop and all of these are connected in this way. And here we are having lower order addresses. These are Lower, lower order demultiplexed addresses and here we have here we have this is our code memory so this is our code memory ROM ROM is here and suppose let us assume this ROM is 64 KB. This means total locations in this memory is 65,536. The first location is location number 0, then location number 1, then location number 2. In this way, if, in, if you move in this way, then the last location, the, the last location is 65,535. Total locations are 65,536. This makes 64K. So location start with location number 0. That's why the last location is 65,536. So these are total 64K locations. At each location, we are having one byte. That's why total 64 kilobyte is the memory capacity. Now these are the 8 lower bits and 8 higher bits of the addresses are here from the port 2. So these now this ALE signal, ALE signal is connected to this clock. The clock of the D flip flops which are joined together is connected to ALE signal. <coughs> this enable is connected to ground. So if enable is connected to ground, then what will happen? This will it is zero. Zero is connected to this tri-state input, zero is connected to this tri-state input, and zero is connected to this tri-state input. To all the tri-state uh, inverter. For the tri-state input that is connected to ground zero. This means all the tri-state inverter are in active mode. 
So whatever value you will get, you will get at the input, this input, this input or this input. That will be inverted by this inverter. So this AI is connected to clock and A8. Now in this, this is 64K 64 KV memory. This means in this memory there are total 16 address lines starting from A0 to A15. So A0 to A7 are connected here and then there is they are all connected here like this. So this is A8 and like this you will get one A15. So A15 from port 2 pin number 7 is connected with the A15 of this code memory and A8 is connected to A8 of this code memory. In this way, all these lines are connected. All are connected here with A14, A13, A12, A11, A10, A9. So all these lines are connected with this. Now in this memory we have we have one CS we are having CS bar and we have one read bar. So CS bar and read bar is connected to PSEN bar. Directly we will connect this to this. Now there are eight data lines. Now there are eight data lines. Uh, in in this memory, we write these as D7, D6, D5, D4, D3, D2, D1, D0. So what we will do? AD7. This AD7, this is connected to D8. AD6 is connected to D6 AD5 is connected to D5 So in this way you will connect these lines and AD0 is connected to AD0 is connected to D0 data line In this way we will complete the interface. So now suppose in the PC register, in the PC register of microcontroller, we own this microcontroller. When we own this microcontroller, then we know that it will wake up from the address 0000H. Means it will load PC bin 0000H. Then it will, this controller will check what is the position of EA pin. Now EA bar pin is ground. This means what this controller will do? It will transfer this value of program counter. The, this is a lower 8 bit and this is a higher 8 bit. So lower 8 bits it will transfer over port 0 and higher 8 bits it will transfer over port 2. This is port 0 and this is port 2. So port 0 contains the lower order address. Port 2 contains the higher order address. So our program code, our code is stored at location number 0 in our port memory, external port memory. Because EA bar is 0. This indicates that our program, application program is in external port memory. And the address 0000. 0, 0, 0. So now lower 8 bit address will be transferred over port 0 and higher 8 bit address will be transferred over port 1. So here we have 0 in binary. We will convert this. This is 0, 0, H, higher 8 bit. So convert it in binary. So it will be for this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. For this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. There are, there are 8 binary 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 8 zero are here. And for the same way for the lower also, lower order address also, there are 8 zeros. 
machine cycle has been started so now what will happen for one t state for one t state a l e signal will go high when a l e signal will go high this means here you will get one now a l e is one so this is connected to this clock clock you will get one here you will get one here so all the d flip flops eight flip d flip flop clock signal will get one so due to this what will happen whatever is the value of d inputs that will be transferred to the output side so at the d input we are having 0 0 0 0 all zeros are there that's why it will be transferred here 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so these addresses has been now demultiplexed they are locked or latched <coughs> so after one <coughs> after first machine cycle ALE signal will become low so now this clock will become low now if this is low this means whatever values are available here now that will not transfer to this side this means there will be no change in these values okay. so now lower order addresses has been latched and higher order addresses are already available over A8 to A15 now PSEM bar this signal will go low this will be low and if it is low then here you will find 0 and here you will find 0 so now what will happen due to this 0 this particular memory will be selected due to this read bar the content available at memory location at memory location 0 0 0 0 h at this memory location and this memory location is your location number 0 at this location whatever is the content 8 bit content that 8 bit content is available over these data lines let us assume the 8 bit content available here is uh, 7f so 7f means 0 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 these 8-bit values are available over location number 0 so now these 8-bit values are available over these data lines and it is available here now ad 0 to because through these 8 data lines these 8-bit data will travel so now here earlier we were having the lower 8-bit addresses but now what we, what we have we have now 0 1 1 1 this is 7 1 1 1 1 this is f now this 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 these values have been replaced by data so in the early part of of this machine cycle over this addresses were there but now over these lines now we have this data so now here the value of here we are running 0 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 but the ALE is 0 because machine cycle is not completed and since ALE is 0 that's why these value will not transfer to this side because here we required location 0 only if anyhow this value is transferred here then the address will change because at the higher 8 bit it is 0 0 it is same higher 8 bit but the lower 8 bit we are having now 7f if we will not have have this interfacing ic then when data is coming over this 87 to 80 0 then what will what will happen address of this memory will change because it will become 0 0 7f and still cs bar is 0 and read bar is 0 then what will happen then then content from the memory location 0 0 7f from here whatever is the data that will enter inside the controller and this will give some misinformation so in this way controller will not work that's why we have to latch we have to lock these lower 8 bit addresses so for locking or for latching we are using this ALE this is called as address latch enable addresses lower order addresses is latched is it locked so when 
This 8 bit data is entering in the controller through AD0 to AD7. So this data will not affect the lower order addresses because ALE signal, ALE signal is low and if ALE signal is low this ALE is connected to the clock of all the D latches so these D latch will not operate and if D latch will not operate then there is no change at this side so in this way data will enter inside the controller it will go in the decoder section decoder will decode it then controller will execute it after the execution the value of PC will increase by 1 so now it will become 0001 and now this is the new address new address will be available over these port 0 and port 1 and same way in the next machine cycle again ALE will go high again the lower order address will be less again the data from particular memory location will enter inside the controller so in this way memory will be interfaced with microcontroller external memory only thing this is a code memory if in place of code memory we are having suppose data RAM if we are having RAM in that case this CS bar suppose 64 KB data RAM is there then CS bar we will connect to ground read bar and write bar two signals are there in this case this read bar is connected to port 3 pin number 7 and write bar is connected to port 3 pin number 6 here these so these signals are connected to data RAM external data RAM right and when we are using code memory at that time there is no need to use these signals only PSEN bar is required so PSEN bar is required with only code memory and read bar and write bar is required with data RAM and other things are same 